When Brian Ritterby was laid off from his job making furniture, he said he worried that at 55, no one would give him a second chance. But he found work at Energetics, the wind turbine manufacturer in Michigan. Today, it's hiring workers like Brian who said, I'm proud to be working in the industry of the future. Nick Shute is here today with his boss, John Serrano. John's an owner of Punch Pizza in Minneapolis. And Nick helps make the dough. <laughs> Only now, he makes more of it. John just gave his employees a raise to 10 bucks an hour, and that's a decision that has eased their financial stress and boosted their morale. Tonight, I ask more of America's business leaders to follow John's lead. Do what you can to raise your employees' wages. And as we mark this occasion, we're also mindful of the empty chair in this chamber. And we pray for the health of our colleague and our friend, Gabby Giffords. One of those we lost was a young girl named Nydea Pendleton. She was 15 years old. She loved Fig Newtons and lip gloss. She was shot and killed in a Chicago park after school, just a mile away from my house. Idea's parents, Nate and Cleo, are in this chamber tonight, along with more than two dozen Americans whose lives have been torn apart by gun violence. They deserve a vote. They deserve a vote. They deserve a vote. Gabby Giffords deserves a vote. The families of Newtown deserve a vote. The families of Aurora deserve a vote. The families of Oak Creek and Tucson and Blacksburg and the countless other communities ripped open by gun violence, they deserve a simple vote. We'll keep working to help all our veterans translate their skills and leadership into jobs here at home. And we will all continue to join forces to honor and support our remarkable military families. I first met Corey Remsburg, a proud Army Ranger, at Omaha Beach on the 65th anniversary of D-Day. A few months later, on his 10th deployment, Corey was nearly killed by a massive roadside bomb in Afghanistan. His comrades found him in a canal, face down, underwater, shrapnel in his brain. For months, he lay in a coma. And the next time I met him in the hospital, he couldn't speak, could barely move. Over the years, he's endured dozens of surgeries and procedures, hours of grueling rehab every day. Even now, Corey's still blind in one eye, still struggles on his left side. But slowly, steadily, with the support of caregivers like his dad, Craig, and the community around him, Corey has grown stronger. And day by day, he's learned to speak again, and stand again, and walk again. And he's working toward the day when he can serve his country again. My recovery has not been easy, he says. Nothing in life that's worth anything is easy. Corey is here tonight. And like the Army he loves, like the America he serves, Sergeant First Class Corey Ramsberg never gives up and he does not quit. Yeah. Corey.